not a whole flow of thoughts and now I'm just kind of like bleh. Anyhow, <laughs> anyhow. Alright, so I guess we're going to restart again and we're going to start trying this conversation. Um, games is right. all about, this whole podcast is all about games and the way we play. Yeah. Right. So we're going back into memories, the games I used to play and the games that you're playing now. Okay. So the games that I definitely used to play a lot growing up was Ludo. It was one of my favorite games ever. I like the idea of you leaving home to go to find your new journey and all that. You get all that from them four beads yes. and rolling six. Yes. <laughs> you make this whole narrative of story for Ludo. So what, what did, did Red have a ba- Okay, what's the backstory between the red and the blue? The red and the blue? Well, nothing red was good, first of all. And blue, blue, God love you. That was my background of that. <laughs> you just said nothing red was good. I mean... Uh, yeah, hmm. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, you just you, you just said all shade from all red men. Uh 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 huh uh huh. Uh, now next month throwing shade too. There you know you know what you know what go ahead throw all the shade that you want. Oh yeah, but but support an all red man because I respect. Oh yeah, well yeah, they give love to the reds now. That was just my thoughts back then, and I never say it's my thoughts now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yes, um, I always found the game very intriguing because. If it is that someone steps on you, you immediately have to go back to where you start. So it's like a negative impact on your life now. That's how I used to always see it. Same thing with Snake and Ladders. Snake and Ladders was also a very top favorite because you will be going through positives, climb up the ladder to reach where you're going, and then you bounce up a snake in the way, whether it be whatever choices you would have made, whatever influences you would have had, and it goes right back down. Okay. Sometimes big, sometimes small. Okay, you get real deep in the life philosophy of games, and I just want to know that you actually like board games and stuff. So I get Ludo, yeah. I get Snake and Ladders. What else games do you used to play? I feel like you play Monopoly. Oh, I liked Monopoly, but I don't like it as much as those games. Mostly because Monopoly is more about monetary value, and I don't think you should see life associated with that way because life isn't always about money, you know what I mean? I like the actual values more than the money. Okay, well, you mean an actual values? Because you're going real deep into games here, and I feel like this is the direction I want to go, so let yeah. me go. Okay, so remember I told you that both of those first two games where I described is based on the obstacles you would meet, right? Mm-hmm. But Monopoly only share that thought in a financial situation. So you're trying to finesse your way to buy things in life, and then when you get caught, you get thrown into jail. And then you could bail yourself out either by paying or by just rolling a dice. Mm-hmm. And that seems very, um, how I say, artificial. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say that it probably doesn't happen in life. I mean, people buy their way through life all the time. It just doesn't apply to me. Okay. So what would you consider apply to you? Because it seems like you understand games and in terms of like life lessons. Yeah. So that's why, um, in terms of the games that would mostly influence, I would probably say Snake and Ladders. Really? Just Snake and Ladders? Yeah, Snake and Ladders. Okay. Okay, so we got an interruption of a beep. Yeah. Anyhow, continuing. <laughs> so, Snakes and Ladders, Ludos, Life Philosophy. What else about games that you wanna you think you want to touch on? Well, I really love Tetris. And I don't think I want to go into a, philosophy, a philosophical reason why I like it. I just really like the idea of things fitting in place. Okay. All right. What about um, video games then? Because we're talking along the lines of Tetris. You used to play video games? Uh, Yeah, but I wouldn't say um, a lot of video games. My main focus was on the Nintendo games. I really love Mario-related games like Mario Kart, Super Mario Brothers, Super Smash Brothers, those type of games. Oh, that sounds like vibes. I used to love Mario. Mario is one of my first games as well to play in. So yeah. for me, playing games was Mario 64. That was literally like the first game I actually come really close to beating. Mario Kart, that was our community game. Yes. Um, what are games we used to play? Then we had the whole Tekken era. That's when PlayStation started coming. And then we had like all the... We had a lot of games growing up, so I, for me, I'm a gamer, gamer, and I love games throughout everything now. Yeah. Um, what about your games like you played with your friends, social games and stuff? Okay, social games, I would more say um, most of the games that we played growing up, well, primary school games, well, as girls' school, so we used to jump rope. Yeah. We used to play catch and rescue. 
um it had this really weird game where all of us would just stand up on our wall and try to push each other down wait what yes i don't know the name of it though we, so, we used so, to get physical damage okay they, so they banned the game. okay explain the rules of that you literally just stand by a wall and just pushing people down yeah so like five of us would stand on this wall and we'll sardine pack ourselves onto the wall and then we have to like push ourselves so it's kind of like a tug of war with our bodies <laughs> just I, talking about it it seems really weird and in you mean no 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 it, it sounds like fun because i remember in a memory back in the day when i was like um in primary school we had one weird game that we used to pull we used to pull each other off the wall now so we all line up but it was like like the storm situation but we'll grab each other by the head and just try to shove them off to see who comes off the wall now so ah. it was a different in terms of like that game now but i'm like wow barbaric yep we had fun some. i think one of still one of the most violent games out there that we used to play was red over though what wait red over red over and so and so right over oh my goodness red over i remember playing that game yeah i see a man nearly cut his neck from that game dog how okay so we this was in secondary school now now i used to play pan right and we okay. had this pan group and we was kind of bored so we decided to play red over and it was this i had a friend it was pretty wild and whatnot and it was his turn to come over so he gain up. He said, you know, he used to make it all intense, you know, <laughs> drag your legs, to build up momentum and shit. Mm-hmm. And then he gone to run over, but the hands that he went were very tight. So he slammed into the hands by his neck. and So he clotheslined himself? Yeah, and he fell on the ground really hard. Oh, he, he looked... started to cry and shit. I kissed him on his forehead and he felt better though. But... Oh, he look, yeah. oh, he looked for that though. Like, yeah. <laughs> he clotheslined himself though. Oh, you could choose your strongest hands and try to break that, and which and your scrawny already though, like. Wow. Yeah. All right, right over. It's the most violent game, okay? And you saw men nearly dead with that. Mm. Yep. Mm. <laughs> mm. Just holding my neck for that one. Yeah, All that. Right. Uh, R.I.P. Neck. What are What are the games that you used to play? Um. Okay, I talked about skipping. Well, like I said, it's a girls' school, so we used to mostly like like to sing the favorite songs and make up dance moves for it. I don't know if that's a game or not. No, well, that's just play, so I like yeah. it. And, well, that is good vibes. Yeah, so that time we made up a dance move for, um, that's, not that's, well, yeah, that's this child was a favorite, Cheetah Girls was a favorite. Yeah, we used to make up all kind of crazy dance moves for those. I'm lip-sync. hearing Disney Princess uh, songs and stuff coming out of my head. Yes, right yes. Oh. So every girl, well, we would all choose a character, and people was fighting who was Raven and Cheetah Girls and that kind of nonsense who was um beyonce in destiny's child you know crap like that i mean who knows destiny's child right now like who is destiny child right we all know it's the queen bee all right yeah queen bee and the lesser known sister solange (laughs) yeah all right wow divas okay that's that is some good vibes what about video games video games um okay so when i was in primary school I didn't really play video games all that much. The one video game I remember playing though was Crash Bandicoot. And that was because my god sister had a PS2. Oh, nice. So I used to go over by her and we would play Crash Bandicoot. We would gather the fruits, try to avoid the nitrogen boxes. And I find it was really interesting. But it never made me want to get a PS2 myself. Okay, so, go- so video games never really appeal to you as a... Let's generalize as a girl gamer. Well, personally, at that time, I wouldn't say it did. I mean, I had an understanding of Mario and stuff because what I would say was a classic growing up. I had a cousin I used to go by all the time in Fort George and her brother had a PC with all different sorts of games like Mario. PC Master Race. Yes. So he had Mario Kart, he had Perfect Dark, he had Bubble Bubble, Smash Brothers, all games that you would have normally find in your... um, year 64 and other devices he have it on his pc and we used to play the hell out of those games especially like bubble bubble and smash brothers i was always yoshi sorry i was always yoshi and i was always the pink bubble bubble i don't know bubble bubble you don't know bubble bubble you should play bubble bubble what is bubble bubble so bubble bubble is basically these two monsters they're able to blow bubbles to get rid of bad guys 
and they could also get some coins from getting fruit and other candy and food and whatnot available there if i ever see like a picture of it outside it's well, really interesting I, i'm really i never heard of bubble bubble in my experience and now i'm not lying i mean I, I know a lot of games but i never come across bubble bubble i never beat old bubble bubble i think the furthest i've ever reached was level 60 something but i think it's 100 levels in total oh wow yeah it's really fun. so it's a multiplayer game so it's like a two-player game yeah you an could adventure platform all kind of stuff yeah you can either play with yourself or play it with another person yeah but maximum is two person it's kind of have an arcade setting too Okay, so there's an arcade game called Bubble Bubble out there that I am going to definitely check out in yes, my experience. Yes, you should. Most definitely. All right. I'm going to take the conversation and shift it a little bit more to now we're, we're growing up. We're now yeah. like in our 20s. We're just into society, finding our rules, finding our niche. Do you consider yourself a gamer in that regard? Or in, do t- you- in terms of playing games throughout life and not as just video games? Well, for most of the conversations that we've been having, we kind of realized that a lot of what we understood as children or the games that we played as children we kind of some of us adopted towards our, our understanding of life and use some of those techniques and applying that to our day-to-day experiences so mm-hmm. along those lines like what gaming taught you about life that you was allowed to kind of equip yourself with okay so let me think a little bit about it based on the games i would have played now it had some times where <laughs> In Smash Brothers, I would always remember the one key thing that used to always, I always get excited to try and get was the hammer because you could just hit people and move on with your life now, boy. I mean, in the real life, you can't do that. I mean, I mean, you could hit people, but no, the it's just consequence not, would be different. Yeah, the consequences for your action is different. So it just inspired me that, okay, well, if it is that people... Uh, making you feel a how you could either like address it accordingly and if it says that doesn't work then you could um i wouldn't say like get rid of them because you can't really get rid of a person just like that but try to um digress and move on as maturely as you can hmm. okay I- i'm seeing i'm slowly seeing the linkages yeah. um well for me I grew up, I grew up in the ghetto. Yeah. That's no, that's the best way I can explain it. I don't really like say, calling it a ghetto, and I don't believe it to be because that's my hometown. Big up, big up the places I live. And we used to play some serious, serious violent games, but not in a sense that we understood it of violence, but it was just more like survival strategies. Yeah. I call it survival strategies, but it was just pure games: water bag war, playing pitch, all these kind of stuff. We knew how to navigate space using games now. Because that's what was how the best way we could relate to the world around us. Yeah. Growing up now is that is like that same vibe. Like I can I know some of my friends like back in the day who I grew up with. If I talk to them now, we still could pick back up instantly from just like playing all fours or playing a little smash or playing here. Because we kind of found bonds and understood life through these kind of games. Yeah. Um and this is where I kinda of bring in the conversations on like as a girl gamer, because I consider you a girl gamer in terms of how you understand play, mm-hmm. those kind of stuff. Because if I remember, you do beats. Yes. And I find that is very creative, and I find that's very playful in your experience too. So I consider that like a creative game that you probably used to play as a child that you're not really addressing. That I want to kind of sneak in. Oh. <laughs> and have a conversation. Well, for the jewelry making, if there's one thing jewelry making taught me, is patience. Ah. Oh. Yes, because patience is something that I didn't really have much growing up. I used to get irritated very easily. I used to lose my temper very easily too. And it took me having that jury business and trying to build up that patience and trying to negotiate instead of trying to fight down everything. Because I used to fight down a lot of things and be very stubborn. That I think was one of the defining points of me trying to mature as a person. Okay, so do you consider making jewelry fun or is it a business for you? Because it sounds like you don't consider it to be fun. Well, no, I would not say that it's not fun, you know, because um, a lot of the aspects of it is pretty fun to me. The idea of creating something new that pleases someone that they would be able to wear, that it expresses themselves. Like, I always find that um, exhilarating to me. 
I always find jewelry shopping for beads and all those things to be a pretty fun activity. Trying to design something new out of basically, you know how for in a technological experience, changing data into information, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Like I always find that aspects pretty fun. I like to see people express themselves using my work because it means that my work is nice enough to be expressed in such a way. Like I always get a thrill from that. What I would say when it stops being fun is when it is you realize that it comes as an expense to you. Okay. Yeah. Whether it be you're not making a sufficient sales of it with COVID and everything going around, not much people see jewelry as an essential item. Oh no, it's definitely not. Yeah, essential. I know I it's not an essential right, item. Right now, my friend who owns a whole jewelry store is struggling through COVID, but he's going strong because jewelry is life. We, yeah. we understand how beautiful jewelry can be. So I understand where you're coming from from that angle. As in, once it becomes an expense and not as a. Well, expense is not the right word that I'm thinking of right now, but I, I understand where you're coming yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I didn't really thought about it when I was thinking about it. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Let's continue, though. Um, games, as you are also a teacher, correct? Yes. Do you use games in your school and your activities when you're working with your students? Well, I try to make it as interactive as I can based on the idea of games that what I do. So what I do is that because I'm familiar with how social media is and I'm familiar with a lot of the things that's going on, I try to use that imagery to relate to them so that they could understand the work better. Does so it work? Most of the time, yes. How do you mean? Because I, all right, honestly, I'm off of TikTok. I'm, I'm not even on TikTok. Yeah. I, I, the last person asked me why I told him I'm okay. It'll give me ADHD. <laughs> so I am. I kind of realized that for me, social media has shortened my attention span. So I have issues with focusing on certain aspects of stuff. Uh, but I am generally kind of focused as an individual. So that's my personal take. So I don't know certain social media cultures. What you're talking about is out of my paradigm. So that's... would you would you, would you like to care to elaborate? Okay. So what I would do is say it is I'm teaching. Um, Nutrition, right? Because as a topic, I actually started teaching with my phone tools. So if I'm teaching nutrition, then I would say, well, you know, we like to eat KFC a lot. And I would break down what exactly consists of KFC and see if it is nutritious enough or if it's just another fast food. And I'll let them know, well, you know, it has a lot of fat present in that KFC that might not be as nutritious as we would want it to be. But if we look at it, it actually is a balanced meal. It's just that the portions are off. Okay. How do you convert that into games? To games now? Well, I don't know. Well, you see, you kind of out of the loop for a little bit. So you might not know of the game Among Us, right? Of course I know Among Us. I'm oh, not you know out, it? I'm not out of the loop. I'm I'm out of certain social medias. But uh, if you're talking games, I know Fall I know Fall Guys. I know Among Us. I know I'm currently playing the um, Genshin Impact. I, I know games. Nice. Yeah, okay. Check yourself. But Okay. So in terms of the way how they play about those games, right? Well, you know, the main idea of the game is to try and figure out who the imposter is while mm -hmm. doing your task. I know there's also a card game called Mafia that we used to play. Yes. And that was yes. a vibe. So. And that was a pure vibe. And I was talking to them about um, Mafia and Among Us. And because I know Among Us is the craze right now, even though it came out ages ago. Okay, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's go with that. So, all of that. And then they realized that, hmm, let's know about Among Us all of a sudden. So because how I know about like trendy topics, it's a bit more easier to open up to them to try and get them to do the work. So wait, you're trying to get students to learn their work while playing Among Us. That's what you're telling me. Well, I wouldn't say that's the main reason. Because how I'm up to date with a lot of things that's going on, it's a bit easier for them to talk about. So... Okay, so all right. Um, uh, so are you just referencing Among Us within your school programming or are you using Among Us in your classroom setting? I'm you referencing it. it. Like, I'm thinking now, like, on class that literally is in the game Among Us that is playing while going through, like, say, and they find a new poster, they still have the homework of trying to break down the nutritional values of KFC. Yeah. That is what's kind of running in my mind and racing in those ideas. That's kind of awesome. Yeah. I'll give you an idea. Do it. <laughs> yes. 
I will consider it. All right, but yeah, that's interesting. Um, I had a theater teacher on one of our last podcasts, and she was really elaborating how play, how she uses play to interact with children. And I'm think, and it's really interesting now because we're in a space where COVID requires more interaction because we're now on this digital, virtual media, and I know a lot of teachers are struggling with that interaction, and. What do you think about that? Games, the, how games interact with each other and how virtual games could work within a classroom setting. I'm sorry, I yeah? just kind of zoned out a little bit there. No, oh, yeah, I mean, we're getting really too No, no, no. No, it's not that, no. It's just, my phone was buzzing a bit and I think my girlfriend outside there with my charger. Mm. Mm. So, oh. we, we oh. stopped oh. mm, no. yeah, We're taking a pause? Yeah, all right, we to one so yeah welcome back hope your phone is okay and all that stuff yes. in the situation how's the vibes the vibes good man the vibes good all right so we got some very interesting feedback from our technical staff to change around the way we have we talk about games and dynamics so i change around the games and talking about how we move those dynamics what do you think yeah technical and i was hoping it to be more organic so i'm a little bit about confused a little confused right now um, I had a, let, me, let me try to pull it back because I'm a uh, uh, games. Right, you was asking me a question before I got interrupted. I forget. My, I even forget that question. Like, oh my I, god. I, 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 mm, uh, now I'm stumbling. Yeah, I stumble across this and see some vibes coming true. Uh, no. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So here's a reality of mine that I'm kind of not as real truth is that. When I was growing up, I never played enough games with um, girls, oh. and so I know that I'm trying to figure out those gaming languages and all that stuff to figure out how girls play games, because I know in the paradigm where I'm in, girls don't really play enough. The kind of games that are out there are really male-oriented and male-structured. Yeah. So when it comes to the language of gaming for girls, it's not there. Like I did love the whole red over, red over, skipping and all that stuff, and I'm also now trying to figure out how we continue that language growing up. So if you understand that kind of paradigm and yeah. that kind of shift. So what's your opinions and what's your thoughts about games currently in terms of the whole landscape? Okay, so let me think about it from my perspective. So a lot of the games we growing up, like you said, is mostly meal oriented. So the games that we would have played growing up as a child, the skip and the red over and so on, you don't really see it much being played in real life because it's not to say that we're going to be physically skipping through a lot of things i don't know well i can't really vouch for my other female soci- um, counterparts but i don't really see the connection which is why it probably confused you as to how exactly girls play games through life because they do well it's not necessarily like that but it's more like i know distinctly even though let's say our storytelling we have a lot of boy day storytelling but we don't really have girl day storytelling and then yeah. when you go into like video games a lot of it is more male oriented in terms and then instead of female oriented yeah. and then the games that are female oriented tend to be very commercialized or yes. very uh, very extremely sexual and not also in those tones and paradigms so it's like where is the gaming girl language is it is it that it's just about sex is it that we we're designing that language to be about sex like well, if I would say um, some of the games that I remember growing up was mostly about trying to create that feminine feature. So we would have played dressing up games. We would have played Barbie related games. All of those games would re- would show to us, okay, when we are adults, we have to wear makeup. We have to have our hair a certain way. We have to do our nails, all those things. Some of the games that we would play that is, not all of them, of course. If you were playing, say, video games like the one I listed earlier, like Mario and um, Smash Brothers and all those games, like you said, those games are very male oriented. So they would cater towards the masculine, like for males now, in a way. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a bit harder for women or females to relate to those types of games compared to the males in terms of how it is they go about doing life. You know what I mean? That's why I mostly related to board games instead of video games, and I know that's not really your focus. I know my focus is games and all, like and games I, generally. And my, I mean, the end goal focus is to start focusing on Carnival as a game as well too, because yeah. I think Carnival is our game as a people. 
mm-hmm. and not our spectacle on our event but we all play mass and we all enjoy this beautiful experience and there's a lot to be unpacking there for later seasons mm-hmm. and later other series but for now it's really about like where w- how do we play games like yeah. all that kind of goodness that greatness of games and the way we play from physical games to video games to dancing games to sporting events to all the, uh, there is so much and there games, yeah. there's so much there in games is that we're learning to unpack these languages and, and sharing these kind of experiences so that's generally the direction of the whole mm-hmm. so we're going around with the, and that's where we're targeting most of the times so you say carnival is like a game are you talking about like the traditional carnival or the carnival that we even portray today with the um, bra and the panty thing and the feathers? I mean carnival in general, but I think that it has shifted. Like yes, I would all agree. games, but the game that is carnival now is more spectacle oriented. Yeah, and I think they're trying to follow the Brazilian culture a bit too much. Even whatever culture they're following, if you're following games on the whole, because there's an there is this crude undertone that girls really don't play games, and I'm saying that not in the sense that I don't believe in those words, but it's more like no the games aren't meant for you to play they're meant for you to be sexual objects towards a guy who plays like yeah the whole simp, um, simp culture mm-hmm. the, the whole ways that how girls are presenting themselves while playing it's like i don't care about you how you look behind a computer you know i really care about how good you are playing these games mm-hmm. so those are the kind of questions i'm trying to arise and these discussions i'm trying to spark up to kind of figure out what is this what is a real girl gamer yeah because just like how you say people um a lot of narrative have been played around to show what we should expect from a girl gamer because we think that girl gamers are taboo we think girl gamers are strange we think that sometimes um girl who games they only do it to try and gain attention from guys when in reality actual girl gamers enjoy playing games and actually have you know a lot to offer in terms of the gaming world now that is why i could safely say that i won't really classify myself as a girl gamer because mm-hmm. well in the video game world now maybe okay. in the general world because okay so how it is i would go about why i would see myself as a general gamer is because like i said earlier in terms of choosing what's right and what's wrong and that's more or less of a battle to try and like roll a dice to see which option i would go with in a way would i choose the right decision would i make the wrong decision and what will happen furthermore if i make the right decision or what will happen furthermore if i make the left now in terms of those games i mostly play those games in relationships because that would be the choice in terms of is it right to continue pursuing this person or should i just move on and pursue someone someone else or should i just stay on my own and just not pursue anything that has been a game that has been going on with me for the past couple years of when i started my dating life okay yeah so i would say my gaming is not necessarily really with um with my occupation is not necessarily with my crafting as jewelry but i would say though that it has a little bit of gaming in the jewelry i would do because i took up a risk in having a whole self business a business for my own self that i would have started from the root of on my own with maybe guidance from like relatives and supporters and all that of course but i would have had to make risk in terms of should I buy this expensive item to make this expensive thing that would me get sell or me not get sell? That's the type of game I would probably be playing. So you touch on something interesting in terms of relationships and in terms of risk. You're saying more like your gaming experience is relationships. Yes. Like there's a game of risk with playing with boys and sense like if we put that in that kind of Yeah, m- but it's language. not to say that I'm not playing them in general. Is because I am so unsure of a person and what their actual intentions are hmm. that I have to second guess myself and wonder if it makes sense to pursue this or if it makes sense to just let it go. Because what I I see you looking confused, so let me explain a little bit. So let me talk about the first um, sort of relationship like that I would have had. So I 
um, was doing my degree in UE, right? And I would have been. No names. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Continue. Continue. Yeah, yeah so that's all. The, yeah, sorry. All right. Okay, so I was so, doing my degree. All right. So we had a wrap up because we're kind of closing up in some points here. But this is a lovely topic to kind of cliffhanger, especially. Yeah. Because now it's now interesting that you kind of shifted now the conversation to like games and relationships and how games create relationships and how we use gaming logic to kind of understand how navigate ourselves in relationships yeah so closing points so my closing points what i would like to make is that um i agree with the aspect that the games that we would have played in our childhood could influence us in our actual adult life in ways that we ourselves don't even notice unless we actually dig deep into it and that's why I want to thank you for inviting me here because I didn't even realize that until I actually started talking about it. Because I used to always just thinking that, you know, I was just breezing through life on survival mode when in reality that survival mode being a reference from a game that I would have played from before. I have no safety. I only have one life. I can't get extra lives with cheat codes or whatnot. Because I don't have such influences. <laughs> so it's, it's a really interesting conversation if you think about it. It's, uh, there's a lot to unravel in true. Oh, there is uh, so much to unpack with games. And thank you for coming out. Because that is really some... It, it puts a lot of more perspectives into it that I really want to explore more. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I, I have to end it here. It's just wow. Thank yeah, you. No problem. <laughs>